In this tutorial, I will break down one of the most iconic compositions of Johann Sebastian Bach, the Prelude and Fugue in C minor, from the first book. Starting with a dramatic opening, Bach makes us taste a variety of emotions, such as passion, oppression and urgency. Before I give you my insight on learning and practicing, let's begin with the character. In my view, the story offers a mission. The purpose of this mission could be related to anything in life, but the necessary tools are the same. Time and construction. By using these tools, I aim to achieve consistent development and excitement. The straightforward texture offers a playground where we can bring this music to life by coloring the patterns with voicing and various articulations. At the same time, we can listen to harmonic changes and follow where the tension takes us. By designing the architecture of this prelude, we can find a path that will create fluency in the music and bring out a storytelling performance. But perhaps most importantly, we can prepare the listener for the next chapter. The fugue. As Bach constructed most of the prelude out of a texture, let's design the articulation before discussing any dynamics or expressions. Considering that we are playing on a modern instrument, we have several options, and there is no right or wrong way. You can play staccato, legato, or non legato. How I shape the articulation mainly depends on the tempo I choose. In this piece, I would go for staccato articulation for a slower tempo, and non legato or legato articulation for a faster tempo. One of the impressive features of this prelude is that it contains four different tempos allegro, adagio, presto, and the rest where Bach did not specify the pace. This is an excellent opportunity because we can create a more colorful interpretation using different types of articulation. The time signature is 4 4 and we can clarify it as follows. Let's apply small accents to the first 16 note of each group. But here's the thing, if we play all the accents with the same strength, it may sound like 4 4 but with a static feel, which I don't think is a very musical option. If we emphasize the accents in the top notes, it sounds more like 2 4. So here is my suggestion. Let's signify the first beat the most and the third beat a little less. The second and the fourth beats will be similar, with only slight emphasis. So it will sound like this. One, two, three, four. Whether you play legato or non legato, slow or fast, piano or forte, I recommend implementing the accents to make your timing more solid and consistent. Try to bounce on each beat to maintain flexibility in the wrists. Then you can modify the intensity of these accents by adjusting the depth of the bouncing motion. The deeper you go, the stronger accents will occur. This way you can ensure that your piano produces a natural sound in any dynamic. I suggest reading up to bar 25 with hands separate as a first step. Then try to learn each hand at a slow pace while carefully listening to the sound you produce. Remember to relax your wrists and shoulders and clarify the rhythm with accents. Since most people have a weaker left hand, it will require more work. It is critically important that both hands achieve the same quality to ensure that they are in harmony when we bring them together. Also doing this periodically with the help of a metronome will speed up results. Now let's get into the musical plan. Firstly, the part until bar number 25, where both hands play in unison, I divide into four sections. The first one is dramatic and direct. I like to be generous with the dynamics here. From the fifth bar, the character becomes more mysterious. I think there is some symmetry in the stand bar section that we can uncover with a simple dynamic plan. Based on this idea, I will divide this section into five pairs of bars. The first bars will make a suggestion, and the second ones will react. I will do that by playing the first ones more pronounced, and the second ones lighter. To musically progress this section and preserve the character's curiosity, I play each pair slightly less present than the previous. In my opinion, there is no need for excessive excitement, as the musical climax has not yet arrived. Thank you. 
I marked the last bar green, because in my view this bar ends the section, but at the same time starts the next one. At this point I will stop pairing the bars and by starting very softly focus on a gradual build up. In this section, I will suggest a nuance to add more depth to the flow. Bach changes the left hand structure for the first time in bar 18 by switching to B flat in the third beat. Although I prioritize the first beat since the beginning, I will bring out the B flat even more than the first beat, resulting in an organic transition from bar 18th to the 19th. Of course, I will do that without affecting the right hand's accents to expose the musical intention. I see the next 4 bar section as a part of a more extended development that continues until the adagio. Therefore, I will change the course of the progression. First, I will start with a sudden pianissimo and then increase the dynamics with each beat. This time, however, without prioritizing the first ones. As we have built the piece consistently up until now, the 4-4 feeling is already evident and we can afford to make changes in the timing plan. Let's start gently and play each beat more pronounced than the previous. In the next 3 bars, Bach entirely changes the texture. Both hands share a single melodic line. This keeps left hand more dominant, as it announces the roots of each bar's harmony. The right hand, which has a more ornamental character, will be melodically played by simply following the direction of the line. And of course, let's keep the growth in each bar as we are heading up towards the culmination. It's fair enough to call the next section the culmination. The presto can seem scary as it means fast, but I have discovered very efficient fingerings by experimenting with many options, and you can grab the free sheet music from the description. I have a few tips about learning, practicing, and increasing the tempo of this section. Of course, first of all, you must learn these six parts with hands separate, in a slow tempo, preferably legato. Once you can play with no mistakes, you can also try the staccato articulation to gain a different sensation with your fingers. After that, put them together slowly and keep experiencing both articulations until you can play comfortably. You can also spice things up first by simultaneously playing the right hand staccato, left hand legato and the other way around. There are many different methods of practicing this section, but I will give you two of my favorite ones, which can be just enough to play well, if patiently and systematically practiced. In the first exercise, I will pause on the first note of each group and play the rest quickly more precisely dotted 8 notes followed with 30 second triplets. This exercise will give you more time for the broader intervals and put extra stress on the rest, simultaneously offering comfort and pressure. The other exercise is just the opposite. I will start with the triplets and pause on the last notes of each group. In this exercise, we will increase the challenge of the broader intervals, but have comfort before starting each. You can simply play each variations a couple of times in your practice sessions and you will see the results quickly. For performing, I will choose legato articulation in this section. Well, kind of legato. I like to put energy into each key with a slightly sharper attack, so the focus will not be on connecting or separating the notes, but on pronouncing them. Now let's make the musical plan. The phrasing I implement here is different, because I want to build the melody around the second and fourth beats. By transforming them into stronger beats, we can make this passage sound wavy, and give it a unique character. So let's accent the first and third beats lightly, and the second and fourth significantly in the first four bars of the section. What really matters is to create a connection between the accents. We can do that melodically by increasing the dynamics from the weak to the strong beats, and decreasing from the strong to the weak ones. At this point, I will begin to bring out the melodic layer indicated by the notes on the beats and start increasing the dynamics towards the adagio. Also in the last bar, I will stretch the tempo to increase the tension just before arriving at the destination. The same plan for the left hand. 
Let's highlight the second and fourth beats and create a connection to the first and fourth by increasing and decreasing the dynamics. Let's conclude the passage with the same attitude as the right hand. I want to give you a suggestion to make both hands help each other, but at the same time stand out with their own characters. Let's start with a brighter sound in the first bar with the right hand, and following the melodic direction, decrease the dynamics towards the third bar. Then do the same from the third to fifth bar with some more dynamics. Start brightly, then calm the melody. The last two bars are exceptional, as here we change the direction and start to increase the dynamics towards the adagio. The same design for the left hand, but starting from the second bar like a canon. Again, we increase the dynamics like the right hand in the last bars. With this approach, each hand will take the lead at different times, and sound more exciting and colorful when played together. Let's play the whole development starting at bar 21 and continuing till adagio. Make sure to increase the dynamics very gradually because progression continues for 13 bars and for a more convincing build up we want to portion out the crescendo equally throughout. Adagio, which indicates playing the next section slowly, is perhaps the most tragic two bars of this prelude and fugue, and the way I play this melody has quite some freedom. Like the Italian term recitativo, where a singer is allowed to adopt rhythms and delivery of an ordinary speech. Of course, before trying that, I recommend learning the passage precisely by distinguishing each note's time value for a deeper understanding. So here is my plan. I will start the 64th note slowly to smoothen the transition from the 32nd notes. Then by speeding up towards the F, I'll stretch the timing to intensify the next melody's entrance. Also, I will follow the direction of the first melody and lighten the touch before the introduction of the next. Here I will slowly start the 30 second notes and by smoothening the transition, speed up to the next bar. And of course to bring the tension back, I'll abruptly increase the dynamics towards the next bar. As I slow down the pace at the end of the previous section, I will play the first arpeggio chord in the left hand slowly, but the second one will be relatively quicker. Despite starting the allegro section in forte, I keep the tension in dynamics until the end. Also, I begin with a strict tempo, but start stretching the timing to let the listener experience the powerful drive of this music and feel the challenge of controlling it. The decisive character of the last section will give a clue about the story of the fugue, which is about to begin. Feel free to experiment with different tempi, from very slow up to as fast as possible, because we can often find the ideal pace when playing around with extreme options. Also, I think this prelude can sound well in any tempo, therefore your choice of tempo is likely to change and develop as you spend time with this piece. Let's move on to the fugue. 
My articulation choice will be non legato, a sharper one. If you want to do the same, please carefully distinguish the notes' values. For example, 16th notes being shorter than the 8th notes, or quarter notes being longer than the 8th notes. I want to start by designing our main theme in the first two bars, which will appear eight times throughout the piece in different tonalities. We have a small motif, repeated three times in the theme. I like to play each of them with the same spirit, articulated, sharp, almost like protesting. With the rest, well, that's the fun part. After the first motif, I hear questioning. It's somewhat unsure. After the second one, we have an answer. A confident and decisive answer. After the third motif, the team comes to a conclusion, with wisdom and coolness. Let's hear the whole team. In bar 3, this layer takes the secondary role, and the team comes out in the upper layer. I will keep it softer to help the upper team's exposure. Also, I will signify the 8 notes on the beats minimally to keep the 4-4 spirit. Meanwhile, when the upper layer team takes the lead, let's make sure to play it with a brighter dynamic to make it stand out, and design it just the same way as we heard it the first time. Before the third voice joins the party, we have two bars long bridge. To make the team's third appearance more spectacular, I will start very softly, then increase the dynamics generously. Here I will prioritize the upper layer, playing the team's motif. The bottom layer will come from very far and get closer and closer. Bach ends the sequence with the main motif by using it almost like a spoiler and right after, he transfers the theme to the bottom layer. As you heard, the theme's design was the same as before, but it is dynamically more powerful. Since Bach first presents each voice by bringing them together with the theme, I want the sense of progress to be more evident with each new layer added. At this point, we have two voices in the right hand. By starting the upper layer calmly, I will develop it gradually in the next two bars. The second layer has more of a supportive role, therefore I will keep it softer, yet grow it in parallel with the upper layer. Now let's take it from bar 5 and put all the layers together. Here Bach brings another sequence, where I like to start somewhat louder. There is a musical dialogue between the right hands layers, and I will show a very effective way of executing it, so please pay attention. First, let's play each motif with the same attitude. A bright start, followed by a question mark. But here is a trick. Let the bottom layer's motif take over with a brighter start, while decreasing the first motif's dynamic in the upper layer. Then while reducing the dynamic of the bottom layer's motif, the upper layer will take over with a brighter start. And let's keep this plan until the end of the section. Meanwhile, let's also calm down the overall dynamics with each bar, following the direction of the music. Now let's take a look at the left hand. Although it looks relatively simple, we must play the 16 notes melodically to complement the right hand's dialogue. Here is my suggestion. Let's signify the first beat and then by decreasing the dynamics, carry it to the third beat. Here, after lightly accenting the third beat, let's bring it by increasing the dynamics to the following first beat. Then let's do the same in the next bar, but softer. Then just the same again, but even lighter. We can keep the left hand exciting and colorful with this cross dynamics plan. Let's put both hands together. The 
The last motif is also the starting point of the theme. However, as it appears for the first time in a major tonality, I think we can present it a little differently to the listener. As we have arrived with softer dynamics from the previous section, I will start gently, but keep decreasing the dynamics to sweeten the theme. The main challenge here is to clearly show the hierarchy of these three voices in softer dynamics. Let's keep the upper layer lively and the middle layer in the second plan. The bottom layer will be the softest. We have a familiar melody in the next two bars, reminding the left hand's passage from earlier. Let's take the advantage of reaching very soft dynamics in the last section and excite the next two bars with a big crescendo. To make this passage sound more melodic, I recommend tracking the direction of the scale and making minor adjustments to dynamics next to the constant progression. We have four similar motifs in the left hand, which allow us to bring out another dialogue. In contrast to the previous exchange, let's highlight the second character and keep the first one friendly. Also prioritize the upper layer and make the dialogue keep pace with the progression. Now with both hands. The team's design will be the same as the previous one in the next two bars. A pronounced start, followed by a decrease in dynamics. The only difference is that it will be way more powerful, because it arrives after a build-up. Also it is played with both hands for the first and only time. So we need to smoothly manage the transition between hands, and make it sound like you are playing with one hand. We must also keep it alive, which is usually more tricky when it's in the middle layer. Let's first play the team alone, to gain the sensation in touch, and manage the dynamics. Now let's add the upper layer. Make sure to keep it softer to avoid dominating the theme. Now let's add the bass. I like to keep it more present in comparison to the upper layer, but nevertheless, the theme still has the priority. One of the reasons I prioritize the theme is to create a connection with the next section's middle layer, which I'd like to keep present. This approach will result in a longer build-up. You can also experiment with different options, for example, emphasizing the upper layer and keeping the theme as a secondary element. We can offer a colorful interpretation by creating a spectrum of layers. Arguably the most exciting progression comes in the next three bars. Here I like starting by bringing out the middle layer scales, and then emphasizing the ones in the bottom layer. We can invite the next section with its noble character to the game by maximizing the tension. The other layers are built with the main motif of the team, and their role is to support the growth. Nevertheless, I like to keep the upper layer more present to prepare the entrance of the team in the next section. Let's first play the supportive layers. Now let's play the primary layer. Please consider the growth of dynamics as you move to the left hand. Before I put them together, please practice separately, especially the right hand, for more effective voicing. Alright, here we go. we started the team with a question mark at the very beginning of the fugue. Although the question mark was gone in the next design, it appeared with a shy character this time. At this point, I will characterize the team with a confident and determined expression, because the story has developed quite a bit, and we are moving towards the end of this journey. For the rest of the fugue, the team will always appear in C minor, the main tonality, which gives a definite atmosphere to the music. In the next two bars, I want to prioritize also the bottom layer next to the team. This will broaden the overall sound and make this section resonate more orchestral. The middle layer will stay in the background, but it won't be too soft, because it needs to support the other layers. V 
we have a familiar sequence next, reminding the section starting at bar 9. Although my design is similar to the previous variation, it will start with more robust dynamics, since it is coming after the intense progression. The left hand passage has pretty much the same direction as earlier. So let's bring the first beat to the third, and the third to the following first beat. And do this more calmly with each next bar, to gradually ease the tension. Let the layers dialogue in the right hand like the last time, while gradually softening it. I will do something against my articulation plan in the last bar, but I think it will be worth it. I like playing them legato, to make the right hand's melodies more sentimental. Considering that only one bar is played legato throughout the piece, this approach will help us to make it stand out. Meanwhile, the left hand will remain non legato. There are two ways to extend the F in the right hand at the last bar. The first one is to hold it with your finger until the next, and do the same with each appearance. I know this is not the best sounding way, but playing Bach on the piano can sometimes have such disadvantages. The second option is more satisfying, but we can only do it on a modern grand piano, because we need the middle pedal, the so-called sostenuto pedal. If you are playing on such an instrument, simply press the pedal right after the F to prolong it without interruption. The trick here is to press it between the first two 16 notes of the left hand, because we just want to get the top note prolonged. Let's start the next section a little slower, to make it feel like we are almost reaching the top of the mountain. I will here, despite the dynamics, let the left hand take the lead by prioritizing it significantly. The pose that comes on the next bar is pretty unique. This is the only moment we have complete silence, as Bach abruptly shuts down all the layers. Let's excitedly bring the tension up to this point, pretending this is the end. But then, like we changed our mind, suddenly let's keep going with the same eagerness. As you heard, I also widened the timing right before the left hand's octave, because this is the point where we arrive at the top of the mountain. In the last bars, let's just tell what the landscape looks like. From this point on, I will keep stretching the timing towards the end and prioritize the theme for one last time. I also have a small suggestion about pedaling. There are rare situations where I use the sustain pedal when playing Bach, and this last section is one of them. To be clear, I'm not going to press it all the way down, as that would create too much blur. Instead, I press it halfway and change it on every beat, to add more resonance to the final appearance of this theme, and to make it sound big, like an organ. There can be endless possibilities to create a unique interpretation of classical music. I find it remarkable about Bach that these possibilities are open to extreme options, yet they can sound beautiful. Now I will put together everything I explained in this tutorial. Here it comes.
please support the channel by giving a like if you find this video helpful. See you in the next one.